tell you point blank, I have not one ounce of remorse for Tresian's death. Oh, no. This is Michael Gaines, who's facing sentencing for the charge of battery against a law enforcement officer. As he appears before Judge Rebecca Hillshaw, she addresses him directly about his actions. All the evidence shows that you deliberately yeah, okay. to use the yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. The you words did. were that you deliberately were hawking up. I didn't hop up no saliva, okay? And you're gonna believe those lies. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't hop up no saliva. You're gonna believe a lie because they wear in uniform. Gaines accuses the officers of believing lies just because they wear uniforms. The judge tries to maintain control. Gaines continues to raise his voice and shows no signs of backing down. You ain't gotta scream at me. You gonna raise your voice at me? Oh my God. However, how Gaines talked to the judge was shocking, but how he replied to Assistant District Attorney Kevin O'Connor was even crazier. You raise your voice to me, I raise my voice to you. You just in a row. I appreciate Mr. Gaines making point down. He's probably going to see The situation becomes tense, and the judge ordered Gaines removed from the courtroom. As he's being escorted out, Gaines has some choice words for O'Connor. In the end, the judge decides to go beyond the initially proposed 10-year sentence and imposes a 13-year sentence in state prison. However, this wasn't the only time a convict freaked out during their sentencing. Take, for example, the case of Ricky Brown, who's facing several charges, including five counts of kidnapping, possession of a weapon by a convicted felon, discharging a firearm within the city limits, pointing and presenting a firearm, and resisting arrest while armed with a deadly weapon. Following a hostage situation in Newberry, the incident took place at the Vocational Rehabilitation Center on Evans Street near Wilson Road, across from Newberry County Memorial Hospital. The situation began around 1.15 p.m. when an employee at the center called 911 to report the incident. Brown initially took about five employees hostage, but all but one were able to escape as the situation unfolded. Fortunately, no one was injured during the incident, despite several rounds being fired by the suspect. Court records indicate that Brown has a criminal history, having been previously convicted of involuntary manslaughter. He served 20 years in prison, and completed his community supervision in May of 2018. Fortunately, the hostage situation was resolved without further harm by the Newbury Sheriff's deputies. Brown was charged to court, but during his bond hearing, he claimed that his actions were caused by mental illness and not getting the help he needed. You need some help for mental health, that's what I need, mean, what I've been asking for. If I went to mental health three times, asked for some help, and then nobody helped me. And still I ain't got my medicine. As if Brown's crime was not outrageous enough, his reaction to his sentence was even more dramatic. Brown's reason would have been feasible if this was his first violent crime, but it wasn't. And a representative of the city, the police, reminded the court of that. But Brown didn't take kindly to the lieutenant's opinion. And tell him why. Because I ain't had my medicine, that's why. Nevertheless, the judge agreed with the lieutenant and held Brown in custody without bond. Then, Brown lost it. You want to run your Should have been up the front. I should have shot you in your Oh my God. Eventually, Brown was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. However, let's compare the jaw-dropping reaction of Brown to the astonishing outburst by Bryce Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes, you can just you can just bring him up right here. 
Why you have me come out like this for? I think you know why. During his sentencing in the Jefferson District Court in Louisville, Kentucky, Bryce Rhodes has already been indicted on multiple charges, including the murders of three people, two of whom were teenage boys. Since he was arrested, Rhodes' behavior has been unpredictable and, at times, violent, leading to him being brought into the courtroom in restraints and a spit mask. However shocking Bryce's crimes were, wait until you see how he handled himself in court. Rhodes was uncooperative in court and regularly interrupted the judge. You've been charged with assault in the fourth degree. I'm going to keep talking because I don't want to have to see you back here for this. What you think of can't find out where you live at? What you think at? Despite this, the judge informs Rhodes about his new charges and offers him a chance to enter a plea. Rhodes refuses to listen or cooperate. I've been charged with assault in the fourth degree, minor injury, terroristic threatening in the third degree, and harassment with physical contact. There are new charges. I'm entering a plea of not guilty on your behalf. Would you like me to read the arrest warrant to you? No, I'm not guilty. Rhodes is appointed a public defender but continues to be uncooperative and makes threatening statements against the court. No, exactly why. Right. Now, listen, stop talking. Uh, you have been... Are you done? He's taken back into custody, and the judge expressed concern about Rhodes' threats against the court and urged the county attorney's office to take appropriate action. Ms. Schroering, that was a threat against the court. I think that the I'm asking the county attorney's office to uh, take that into account and uh, consider what to do with that. The case against Bryce Rhodes is ongoing, and he will have to face the consequences of his actions as the legal process continues. Rhodes wasn't the first person to be disrespectful in court, like in the case of Roshana and Colin Morrison, divorced parents who were before Judge James Hill over a contentious child custody case. Over the course of three days in the courtroom, the two parents have engaged in heated arguments and personal attacks against each other. Roshana accuses the ex-husband of abandoning their three-year-old son and failing to provide child support. I'm angry that his dad lives in Durham, can go on vacations with friends, take mistresses out to eat, take her on vacation, and can't seem to see his son. On the other hand, Colin claims that Roshana withheld their son from him and seeks permanent custody. Judge Hill is visibly frustrated with both parents' behavior and lets them know it. I could care less about it, do you? I could. The two of you are not important. What's important is He admonishes them for acting silly and reminds them that their son is the most important consideration in this case. Two parents, and I'm going to choose my words very carefully here. Two parents can come in and act like such idiots. And you don't need to see two adults act like idiots. Did I say the word idiots? Yes, Your Honor, you did. Despite the judge's astonishments, the heated exchanges continue and the tension in the courtroom rises. Don't, don't you look at me. I am not. You say one more word, you, I get, you say one more word, you're going to go to the Durham County Dead Records today. The angry mother finally heeds the counsel of her lawyer, who's been nudging her to be quiet. After the three day trial, Judge Hill delivers his decision. Just when you thought the case couldn't get more intense, Roshana's behavior in the courtroom will leave you stunned. As the decision is announced, emotions escalate and Roshana becomes unruly. Officers try to restrain her and her brother. Sharon Smith attempts to calm her down. As the situation escalates further, additional officers intervene, leading to the arrest of Roshana and her brother. For resisting a public officer, their mother is also restrained and taken away from the courtroom. Following the incident, Roshana received a 30-day sentence, while her brother and mother each faced 48 hours in jail for resisting a public officer. Despite the outcome, a joint custody agreement is now in place for Roshana and her husband. Judge James Hill received a public reprimand from the North Carolina Supreme Court for improperly exercising his contempt powers, failing to maintain order and decorum, 
and making inappropriate comments during the proceedings. However, while it was clear that Roshana wasn't happy to hear she was going to share child custody with her husband, her reaction to the judge's decision was similar to the case of 21-year-old Milton Watts, who has a warrant for his arrest due to failure to appear on a domestic violence charge. When questioned by Judge Chris Green, You were supposed to be here last month. You did not appear. Why weren't you here? Uh, somebody died in the family. There was no reason for me to be here. Well, it's not an engraved invitation, son. It's a court order. The true shock lies not in the crime itself, but in Watts' jaw-dropping behavior in court. Watts, who was representing himself after his attorney withdrew, attempts to handle the situation, but his understanding of the legal process seems shaky. Your attorney withdrew, so you'll have to hire an attorney? You're a lawyer? Nope. You want to talk to me about me at Bond with me? What do you want to tell me? About what? Bond. That's going to cost you 30 days in the county jail for contempt. Oh, the judge did not like that and gave Watts a 30-day sentence for contempt of court. But Watts' demeanor only worsens as he swears at the judge, leading to additional penalties. Can I give you a piece of advice? What? You can either make life easy or you can make life hard. That's 60. You want to go for 90? That's 90 more. That's 306. I'm working at McDonald's. Now I gotta f***ing come here and f*** my life up. F*** you! Melvin, stop! Despite pleas from his mother and sister, Watts continues to be defiant, and the situation escalates, requiring court staff and additional deputies to intervene. Judge Green initially hands Watts a 360-day sentence, but upon calmer reflection, decides to reduce it to 90 days for his initial domestic violence charge. Watts eventually pleads no contest to his initial court charge and received a five-day jail sentence. However, while Watts' reaction could certainly be dismissed as an effect of youthful exuberance, the same can't be said for the case of Christopher Colon, who's facing a bond hearing at the Broward County Courthouse in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, via video before Judge John Hurley. Colin is charged with two counts of violating an injunction related to a domestic violence case involving his ex-girlfriend. He also has an open pending case for aggravated battery against his current pregnant girlfriend. If you thought Colin's crimes were reprehensible, brace yourself for his shocking conduct during the bond hearing. You already out on bond. You already out. Yes, sir. And my bondsman is willing to take me out again on oh. a bond. That's very kind of him, but that won't be necessary today. Well, I'll see you guys in with a lawyer. Judge Hurley isn't pleased to see Colin back in court, but then he remembers something he wants to let the judge know and comes back to the microphone. And you can go f yourself too. Oh. The judge was not about to let that slide and called him back. Would you bring it back to me, please? Colin comes back and continues to insult and curse at the court. Mr. Colon. Good morning to you. Yes, sir. Wait. Mr. Colon. Yeah, don't mute that. Could you turn that mic back on for me? Turn the mic back on. You got your The judge had the last say. Okay, I'm being dead at you. $125,000. Your bottom no tattoo problem. will be $125,000. How much bond is my bond? $250,000. Okay, no problem. I can bond out with Colin was angry before. Now, he is mad. The court at this time is inclined to hold you in contempt of court. Your I don't give a Go ahead, I got lawyers, I got lawyers, man. Your behavior, your behavior. I don't got nothing to say, man. Now, I will find you in contempt of court for disrupting this court. Now, I will give you- You was already going to find me in contempt of court. I'm anyway, an opportunity. Judge Hurley sentences him to 364 days in the Broward County Jail. A week later, Colin appeared again. This time, something was different. Judge Hurley, um, I apologize for what I did. I was wrong. And not only I was wrong for cursing you out, of the deputies hearing me curse you out, I apologize to them too. Your Honor, I apologize real bad, and I'm asking for my accept my my, my my apology, please, Your Honor. The judge accepts the apology, converting the additional year sentence to time served. But Colin remains without bond for the aggravated battery case and serves nearly 14 months in jail before being released. Colin is a prime example of a convict acting crazy in court.
However, could murdering people at will be considered even a little crazier? Like in the infamous case of Bass Webb, a 30-year-old who's facing two counts of attempted murder. This is a surveillance video that captures Webb attempting to run over two jail employees with his car outside the Kentucky jail. Although one man escaped, the other wasn't that lucky and was injured. While the magnitude of Webb's crimes is daunting, his courtroom behavior will leave you in disbelief. Webb was charged to court for his violent actions, and during his court appearance, he shocked the court. Can you go on your side? Yeah. That be yes? <clears throat> yes. Judge Dixon, who was supposed to preside over the case, recused herself. This is where Webb shocked the courtroom. You can see the shock and disbelief on his attorney's face as Webb spat on the judge. For his cobra spitting abilities, Webb was charged. Target. But the story doesn't end there. Webb has a history of violent behavior, and while awaiting trial, he ignited a riot with other inmates in the Fayette County Detention Center. Webb was at the forefront of the riot. Despite being shot with beanbag bullets and hit with a pepper ball, he manages to throw a metal telephone box at the officers. Now, in court, Webb was charged with third degree assault. He was found guilty and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Webb was later found guilty of two counts of attempted murder for trying to run over the jail employees, resulting in an extra 37 years in prison making it a total of 52 years in prison. Years later, Webb is back in court after being charged with the decades-old murder of yet another girlfriend. Years in prison have changed Webb's physical looks and his head, but it hasn't changed his ability to shock the court. Webb's shocking head had tattoos bearing a rallying call to murder snitches and revealing a chilling murder hit list that includes all judges, all prosecutors, all cops, the media, and many more. Another part of his head bears an expletive. Evidence about how he choked his girlfriend to death and buried her body was revealed in court. Mr. Webb, do you want to come forward? Webb only laughed and sat back when the judge requested that he step forward. After a lengthy trial, the jury delivers a verdict. Webb is sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. However, just when you thought you'd seen it all, enter Melissa Hardwick who was at the Russell and Wayne County Family Court in Kentucky, where a hearing is being held regarding a domestic violence order filed by her husband against her. The judge questions the husband to confirm the accuracy of his statements in the petition and whether he indeed seeks a restraining order against Melissa. And the respondent were married in the past and have children in common, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And were the statements you made in your petition true and correct at that time? Yes, Your Honor. Are you willing to make those statements part of your sworn testimony here today? Yes, Your Honor. The judge then asks the husband to provide a brief account of what led him to request the domestic violence order against Melissa, his ex-wife. Um, <clears throat> things have been escalating, I guess, since the first of the year. And uh, Melissa's had a couple of MIWs and a couple uh, arrests. And she got out of jail in, I guess, April. And she started, she started, we hadn't really had anything personal up until that point. She got out of jail in April. However, the real shocker came when Melissa unleashed her madness in the courtroom. When the husband starts recounting the issues, Melissa becomes disruptive and interrupts the process. It's our personal life. It's no, no, no. your business. It has nothing to do with Miss Hardwick, no. you will be held in contempt of this court if you I become don't, disruptive. I don't care. Despite the judge's warning, Melissa continues her disruptive behavior. I haven't done anything to this court. I haven't done anything to okay. him. She will be arrested for contempt any, of the court. Make any difference. You will serve uh, 10 days for contempt of court. But no sooner did the sentence leave the judge's mouth than Melissa did this. Go now. Watch again as Melissa jumps the bench to have a go at the judge. Court officials immediately intervened. During the altercation with court officers, while being taken into custody, Melissa cursed and fought the officers. After about five months in jail, Melissa Hardwick pleads guilty to the charge of intimidating a participant in the legal process. As part of her sentence, the court ordered her to participate in a rehabilitation program for five years, which allows her to avoid additional jail time. While Melissa's behavior raised eyebrows, it's nothing compared to the explosive actions of Isaiah Gardenhire. 
during his trial in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Garden Hire is at the 4th District Court after a two-day crime spree. He's accused of sexually assaulting his girlfriend, killing her 13-year-old daughter, taking a couple hostage, sexually assaulting the woman, and robbing them. Don't be fooled by the severity of Garden Hire's crimes. Wait until you discover his outrageous actions in the courtroom. Count one, homicide, open murder, statutory short form. Count two, criminal sexual conduct, first degree, weapon use. During the arraignment, Garden Hire appears disinterested and even nods off while the judge reads the charges against him. He then yawns audibly, further displaying his lack of remorse. Stain DNA to be taken upon arrest. The court may impose a consecutive sentence under statute, and it is also a tier three offense. The prosecutor requests that Garden Hire be held without bond or be given a $2 million cash bond due to his violent criminal history. Uh, looking at Mr. Garden Hire's criminal history, it's pretty significant. His criminal history consists of violent offenses, uh, weapons offenses, failures to appear in court. Uh, in this case, Due to the fact that Mr. Garden Hire is both charged with murder and the fact that he was on bond at the time of the allegations occurred. Charge her with murder because she's the one who did it. The judge warns him about speaking out of turn and threatens to mute his microphone if he continues to behave inappropriately. Uh, All right, Mr. Garden Hire, this is your warning. The court will mute your microphone if you speak out of turn again. Despite the warning, Garden Hire continues to act out and makes offensive gestures toward the judge when his bond conditions are discussed. Alternative that bond be set as $2 million in cash sharing. Right, thank you. Mr. Barbary, Mr. Garden Hire, I'm going to ask that you behave in a. All right. If I have any more acting out, sir, we're going to turn off your audio and your video. Go ahead and mute his audio and video. Thank you. The judge eventually sets Garden Hire's bond at $3 million cash or surety, but the hearing is cut short due to his disruptive behavior. Isaiah Garden Hire is held on 12 criminal charges, including murder, criminal sexual misconduct, and home invasion, with a $3 million bond. However, while it was clear that Garden Hire wasn't interested in the proceedings, his reaction during his arraignment was similar to the case of an 18-year-old named William Demopoulos, who is in a probation hearing for criminal damaging, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, and obstructing official business. Prepare for a twist that will make your jaw drop. The hearing takes a bad turn when Judge Chris Green becomes annoyed with Demopoulos for refusing to hand over his cell phone to the probation officer. Give me that phone. What's in that phone you don't want us to find? Nothing, I just didn't see no need for you guys to confiscate my phone and go through it. I mean, and you play by your rules, you don't want to play by anybody else's rules. Judge Green insists on taking the phone for inspection, but Demopolis tries to retreat. The judge calls him back, reminding him of the rules of probation. Okay, man. No, man, this is not right, man. I'm telling you, it's not right. This system is so messed up. Stand there. As the situation escalates, Demopolis changes his story, claiming that the phone belongs to his brother. Whose cell phone is it? It's my brother. Then why didn't you tell him that? I need him handcuffed, please. Eventually, he tries to escape, jumping over the table. The deputies tackle him to the floor. Despite his grandfather's plea, the judge revokes Demopolis' probation due to his non-compliance and charges him with resisting arrest. He is then sentenced to 40 days in jail. However, when emotions run high in court, the actions of William and Jacob Larson, who's in Jackson, Michigan, at the Fourth Circuit Court for a personal protection violation hearing. He is accused of sending unwanted advances and messages through Facebook to a former high school acquaintance, despite a restraining order issued against him. This is the second time the judge questions Larson about his contact with the plaintiff, as the same judge had previously issued the initial personal protection order four months ago. That I warned you about last time, I told you to just leave her alone. She was a classmate of yours. She 
Apparently he has no well, interest me, in seeing I want her to tell me to leave her alone. Despite the warning, Larson continued to violate the order, leading to his current court appearance. So today, you're going to jail for three days, all right? <laughs> and the next time you violate, you're going to jail for... You know what? You got, a, you got a bad attitude. You got a bad attitude last time you were in court. Larson's defiant attitude and lack of remorse irritate the judge even more, prompting him to increase the sentence to 45 days in county jail. Okay, you and her are buddy buddy. Y'all get along. Y'all. Right. 45 days county jail. 93 days in the county jail. You want to go for a year? Oh, try it right now. One more, one more word out of you, it'll be a year of county. Still not deterred, Larson continues to argue and show disrespect, leading the judge to raise the sentence to 93 days in county jail. Finally, the judge orders Larson's immediate arrest. Court officers step in to take him into custody. But when Larson was to be cuffed and taken to jail, he puts up a fight. Put hands behind your back. Now. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you alone. Tell me right now. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Chase his right now. Put it down. Prompting the judge to step in and help pin him down. Larson eventually spent 93 days in county jail. If you thought these convicts were shocking, you'd be amazed at this video of killers who cried in court. 